Good morning, folks. It's June 13th, 2015. And first thing off the bat, I wanted to apologize for not making any beekeeping videos here recently. Um, my time's been taken up uh, doing some farming. I'm raising some broiler chickens and uh, managing a herd of, of Angus, black Angus, black and red Angus. And, and that's consuming a lot of my time to make these beekeeping videos. But I'm trying. I'm trying to make time to get into doing more beekeeping videos. And hopefully following this one will be another one here real soon. But today, I need to split my observation hive. It is just packed to the brim with bees. I have observed at least one queen cell about an inch long and it's completely capped. So if I don't get it split today, over the next week they're probably going to swarm. So as you can see here, I have an 8 frame brood box. And I'm going to take and put probably two of these frames into leaving one and a queen. Now I'll probably leave the mated queen and take the queen cell. And the reason for this being is last time I left the queen cell in here and left it to emerge, it failed on me. I don't know if she got killed in the mating flight or what happened, but it either way, it's a lot more of a pain to add a queen or a queen cell to the observation hive because I have to bring it outside. So with that said, I will be leaving the mated queen in here and adding the queen cell to the split. Now I'm not going to be taking this more than two miles away. I'm just going to take it a quarter of a mile up the road and uh, what I'm going to do is, is I put a screen bottom on this, I block the entrance, I plan on leaving them trapped in here for about three or four days. That is the plan. And then after that three or four day period, I'll be able to set this up where I want it. Now one thing, I, one step I did make, because I'll be leaving them in here, is I've gave them some old honey frames. It still has some crystallized honey and even some capped honey in it. And you'll also notice that I filled the bottom portion with water. They're going to be trapped in here for the next couple of days. They're going to need some water. So I added water right into the comb. And you can just simply do that by going underneath the faucet and filling up the cells. And then right beside that, it's not the right size frame, but this has some capped honey in it too. And it's only a medium frame, but I think that'll be fine for a few days. So first thing first, on opening up the observation hive, let me bring you in a little closer and show you just how full it is. Loaded with bees. Boy, smelling them fan. You can hear the buzz, but it really smells like lemongrass. Now what that would be is the nasonove gland that I'm smelling. And that's where they stick their butts in the air, and the nasonove gland secretes a pheromone. It's kind of a, a gathering pheromone, helps draw them all together, and they do this when they swarm. So right now what I'm going to try and do as easily as possible is cut the wax around this top frame so I'm able to pull it out. this up with the camera so you can see the queen cell now. <clears throat> Did you see it? Nice big beautiful queen cell. And you can see they've already started to chew the end off so it's not going to be too much longer before she emerges. 
Now what I want to do real quick is scan this to make sure my queen, my active queen for the colony, is not in this mix. And I do not see her, but there is just so many layers of bees on this one frame. Funny, the queen was actually fluttering around right here on the bed of the truck, and I just set her up and put her on this bottom frame. So now's my chance to pull this middle frame out. So that means she's on her weight loss program. She's getting ready to swarm. She's almost able to fly, and we don't want that. Two frames split, adding two frames to this colony. Now last year I had made one frame split and they built up really well, but they did not overwinter. Okay, so here's my plan. I want to add a, a frame with some drawn comb and the wedge. That way I can get some wax drawn in here and actually watch them draw the wax out. Gotta clear the groove where the frame slides in so I don't squish any bees in this process. For some reason you squish one and they all get pissed. Talk about girls that stick together. And then in the top, I've got a plastic pergo frame with some drone comb. See, this is a, a process here because you don't want to kill any more than, you don't want to kill any, but it's almost impossible when you're climbing all over the hinge part of the door. And, Basically what I do is just keep going in little increments like I'm doing here, trying to blow smoke around the, the opening to get them to go back in. What usually happens is it forces them to come out because they want fresh air. Then I've got to get all the bees off the inside of it before I can take it back in. Okay, so I think I'm ready to get it right into the house and set it back up. Okay, meantime. While I'm over there trying to make this separation, I've got this huge cluster forming back here at the entrance. Now here they are. I've got them brought in, and you can see they've already moved to this top frame. Don't see the queen right off the bat, but we know she's in here.
Right there she is. She's right there. There, you see her? We've still got her in here. Things are looking good. Now as long as I got all the queen cells out, we'll be fine. You can tell she was on that on that diet, almost able to fly. Now here they are. I've got them brought in and you can see they've already moved to this top frame. So, there we go. I've got half the bees in here. I went around and used the ice cream bucket and the lid and just kind of swept them right in here and dumped them in. So this is done. They are trapped in. We'll give them about four days. Unless I end up changing my mind and taking them more than two miles away. Um, if I did that, I would not have to block them in here. And then in a week, I could go get them and bring them back to the house here if I wanted. Okay, after I shut the video off and got to thinking about it, you know, it's going to be 90 the next couple days. I don't really feel good about leaving them trapped in. So, I decided to bring them approximately three miles from my house to another field that I have access to as a bee yard. Try and get a shot of what's blooming here before we leave. I go in right here. It's an old uh, oil well path that's not pumped anymore. Last, uh, let's see, two years ago I had bees here. They did really well. There's a lot of, uh, well, I call it stickweed. It's a yellow flower. So anyway, I'll feel a lot better knowing that the bees aren't trapped in and they're able to get out and about and fly. So let's get out and get them set up. There's some of the thistle right there. I'm seeing quite a bit of it right here. So. Here's how I transported it, a couple winch straps. I used one to hold the hive closed and another to strap it down to the bed of my truck. Let me get it undone here and we'll get her set up and I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, I set it on this mound here. It seems to be about the easiest place for me to set it without having to knock down a bunch of weeds for them to get in. You know, sometimes as beekeepers, we get a little bit lazy and try to take shortcuts. And uh, I guess my shortcut this morning was thinking about leaving them at the house and trapped in. Now that's all right if you don't have a place to go, but the very best way is to move them two miles away, play it safe, let them fly. They're not meant to be trapped in on this hot weather. They're out, they're meant to be out working these uh, flowers and different things that are in bloom. So, free the bees. Now let's walk around here real quick and I'll show you some of the, I showed you the thistle. Here's some bird's foot tree foil. That's this little yellow flower. And right over here I see one plant, but all the way down the side of the road it's all over. And then this here I believe is what they call hairy vetch. There's several different styles of this. Now at the house I have the crown vetch. I need to get some of this when I come back and uh, let it seed at the house. This here is the yellow stickweed, which it doesn't bloom for another month or so. Great nectar producer right there. And that's what all that is over there. Uh, I believe there's 110 acres here. So I've got plenty of room to, uh, I still got bees. I got bees making orientation flights off the bed of the truck. So anyway, I feel a lot better. Thanks for watching. And if you like these videos, Give me a thumbs up.
there's something you'd like to see a video on, leave the suggestion down below. And at the end of this video, I'm going to leave a link to my farm channel. If you're interested in following along with my farming, please take a minute to go over there and check out some of my videos. Thanks again.